Hello, everybody. I hope you have a great day so far. Everybody having fun, learning a lot. Good. Um, my name is uh, Rob Hilberding. And those of you who have met me before, I already explained, if you wonder about the funny last name and the little accent, it is because originally I'm from the Netherlands, I'm Dutch. I moved to the US about 16 years ago. I work for SaltStack with professional services as a consultant and trainer. I train classes in Salt too. And I work. Yeah, my name is Shane Lee. I've been working with Salt since January last year. Um, I come over from, retired from the military and got on here. I come from the Windows side of the house. Apparently it's easier to train a Windows guy to learn Linux than it is to convince a Linux guy to want to work with Windows. <laughs> so, <laughs> perhaps, so that's why, that's why I'm here. Okay, thank you. Okay, so what are we gonna do today? We're gonna show you, we're gonna demonstrate how to use Salt on Windows and Mac OS as well as show you the, and demonstrate the future parity between the two. So before we start, let me ask you guys a couple of questions. And those who have been in my Windows class may have heard the questions before. How many of you know Linux? Raise your hand. Good. How many of you know Windows? Yeah, OK. How many of you are pure Mac users? See, we have some. I told you. <laughs> How many of you use salt on Mac? Excellent. OK. How many of you are here and have never used salt before? Good. I'm glad to have you guys. Okay. So a little bit of what we're going to talk about. Uh, the history of support. We're going to show you a manual install. We do a software management. We talk about updates, updates for Mac and updates for Windows. And we're going to show a little bit about Windows roles and futures. For those who have been in the Windows class, it might sound familiar. But now we're throwing the whole Mac mix in there as well. Yes? So we get the two of them together. A um, little bit about the history of support. It was officially supported for uh, since 11.1 .1 for Windows. We have support for non-end-of-life uh, versions, which is uh, Vista and newer, and Server 2008 and newer. XP, yes, I know they're still out there. But let's face it, guys, Microsoft already stopped support for that. So <laughs> we will do the best we can to support it, but that's where it actually stops, OK? I mean, yeah, you've seen it. Um, we do have a, a signed EXE installer for Windows, so you don't have a problem with that. That's all taken care of. Okay. For Mac OS X, we have had community support in the past. That's why we have some people here who are running Salt on Mac, yes. Uh, but we are going to start officially supporting it with version 2016.3. That's when you will have the actual Minion, Mac Minion come out. So that's the next upcoming release, right? There will be support for Al Capitan and newer. And it will be a signed PKG installer. Windows, manual install. You can download it from repo at saltstack.com. After that, as shown here, you have some installation parameters you can pass on. The master, the minion name, and then start the service, yes or no. For those of you who are using Salt Cloud to provision Windows system, that's taken care of by Salt Cloud. You just have to tell it where the master finds the minion installer for that. One other thing, if you are using Windows 2008 for the minion, you will need that Microsoft Visual C++ 2008 x84 to be installed. It's not needed for 2012, just pure for Windows 2008. The Max, Mac OS, still also a manual install. Download repo.saltstack.com, it will be there. Use the installer to install silently. There is no parameters for it yet. Yes, it will just install the package. And after that, you will have to go and update the minion configuration file. 
which is normally at the normal uh, section at Etsy Salt, and it will be installed into Opt slash Salt. So after you've done that, you install it, you go to the Minion configuration file, or if you just want to leave the default to this, create a Minion.d directory and put a Minion.com file in there. Correct? Probably. Probably. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it works for Windows. <laughs> it probably works for this. All right. So let's talk a little bit about software management. And I mentioned that before when we were talking about Windows yesterday. The power of salt is that you have one package installed which will work for every OS, and the same will go for Mac OS. So you will have this package not install, package remove, and, pa and package not list packages, which will work on Windows, Mac, any Linux distribution, and so on. You do not have to use a different command. There is the same state modules, package not installed and package not removed will work regardless of the OS. So there is full Mac support for that also, yes, as well as for Windows support. Windows, software management. How many of you know <coughs> about WinRepo? Okay, so some of you might learn something new today. There is, on our GitHub for SaltStack, there is a WinRepo-ng, new, uh, new generation. The way we did it, uh, to actually incorporate the way of installing software doing it the Linux way, but then for Windows, is you have a Win repo there, which you can uh, get onto your master. It's a salt-run update Win repos out of my head, something like that. And then it will put that whole Win repo under your uh, default file routes or wherever you have to find it in your master configuration file. That Win repo is nothing else than a whole set of SLS files, which hold the way how you want to deploy the piece of software for your Windows system. Yes? It will include the ID, the installer, and the installation parameters. I will show you guys that. However, before that becomes available, you have to let your Windows systems know what Windows packages are available for them. Otherwise, they don't. Because don't forget, in Salt, everything is rendered on the, on the system itself, yes? So what you do there is a command package.refresh underscore db. What it will do, and you will see it going over your screen, it actually creates the, uh, copies those SLS files over from the repo to the minion at that point. The way it looks, simple example here. You have the influx capacitator here. Right here, you will tell it the version, the full name, the installer. The installer location can be anywhere in your environment. Here we're just calling it, downloading it directly from the public access. But it could be in your own file server, wherever you want it. Yes. You just point it here in that installer where it is. You give it the normal install flags, dash Q for quiet. The uninstaller you define, the uninstall flags, you tell it if it is an MSI or not, and if it wants rebooted or not. So this is a simpler one. Also, there is full support for Ginger in those. So I can set here, if my grains CPU architecture is 64-bit, and this is a 32-bit program, I want to put it in my program files x86 on my 64-bit system. You have a question. You have a question. Right over here. What protocols are supported for that installer path? Is that just HTTP or do you use like SMB? Um, it's FTP, HTTP, HTTPS, and SALT. The SALT. Uh, yeah, the SALT, uh, the regular SALT uh, file routes. Okay. And yeah. you can even put a hard coded UNC, uh, UNC path or okay. anything that you can. Yeah. So by like going on here, so else otherwise, if it is, you know, a 32-bit system, we will just put it in program files. 
Also here, you define here a four version, all the version numbers, get that full name, the installer, and so on. So that means with that in the repo, I can have version control as well. I can then do in my package.install or in my package.install state, I can tell it I want you to install this version. Or I can do a package.latest, which will automatically upgrade it. Okay. So it, really there is nothing to it. If you look at that, that, that uh, Git repository, the Win repo, you look at those state files, you can write them yourself. But there is a, a number of them out there right now. They're being added by the community. And uh, the only thing what, of course, is not on there, as far as I have seen, is licensed software. Yes. <laughs> so, this is a way of doing that. Software management for Macintosh, for Mac OS, requires homebrew or Mac ports. You need to have that on your system. What it does, very simple, install image magic X, package.install, and it looks for the name, the image ma magic X. Magic. So it's the still the same way for Windows and Mac works the same as you would do it for your Linux system. There is nothing different to it. Just some requirements. Windows updates, we fully support with a Win update module. Uh, sorry, when, uh, there's a state module for Win Update, which uh, calls the Windows Management Update Agent. It manage, controls that. You can specify by category for security updates, <coughs> critical updates or updates. If you do not specify anything, it will install all updates. You can also specify here if you just want to download those updates. Kind of, you know, I want to stage them. I don't want to execute them there yet, but I just want to download them. And then on a later period, I want to execute them. So here's an example. Install critical updates. Win update dot installed. My categories are, in this case, critical updates. Simple as that. Mac updates, there is not a state module for it yet, but there are execution modules for it, where you could get those. There's the software update list available, which will give you all the available updates which are available for your Mac OS system. The update available name, just answer, answer the name, and then do a update with the name of the package, or you do an update all, which will just automatically apply all updates. Windows roles and features, how many of you uh, probably went through that whole uh, exercise? You go to your server manager, you select a role, you hit click, I want this. Then it's like, yeah, let me think about this. Hit click the end. Before you know it, you're five minutes down the road and it will start installing. Uh, we tested this with a full uh, web server install on a not really too heavy Windows box. It was like a two gigabyte, four CPUs. It took like less than two minutes using Win server roles. What you can do there, so there is, there is execution modules. You can do a list installed, which will tell you all the roles and features which are applied to your Windows system. And it will show it in a, you get a list and then brackets, and when there is an X in it, it means it's installed. Yes? So, then the list available will tell you what features and roles are available for that particular window system which I can activate. Okay. Same stuff will show it to you. When server manager remove, will remove a feature or role, and when server manager install will install it. To uninstall all sub features, you do a recursion through. That means like if I select, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I have no. never tested that. To be no, it speaking. doesn't. Uh, that the install roles is only available on the servers. It's, a, it's the same thing as if you're looking at a server, you've got that option to set up roles, and that's not available on the desktop. Right. I just think of features on the desktop. There's no way to 
Yeah, I don't. Yeah. We'd have to write another module for that, probably. Yeah. Yeah, right now, the, 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 you concentrate, you focus on, on, on servers, you know, so. But yeah, but that's a good idea. You, know, I mean. you had another question here. There, go ahead. Well, if you do a, so if you do a, uh, with the server, being server manager, so the question is if your packages are old or off host, uh, when server manager goes to the server manager module there and activates roles through there. Yes, so I don't know if that's even. Possible. Are they MSIs? No. Oh, you mean, oh, you mean software what are What are they? What kind of? Out of the image. Out of the image, and in some cases we do that. And, um, you know, then at that point, if you were to do it manually, you'd be prompted where are the packages. Oh, okay, point to, I get you. Yeah. Point to the side by side files, and uh, so you know, in some cases, I need to be able to uh, to uh, run yeah. that uh, installation path. Uh, we'll have to talk later on that uh, to get some clarification. Yeah. Okay. And maybe something we're not aware of. Any other questions at the moment? Till date, like. Like you know, only install uh, whatever we released from, let's say, last week. Mm. Or no later than. No later than this date. Exactly. So yeah. Have some sort of consistency no, the not 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 at the moment. No, that will just go. Okay, what are the latest critical updates which the system is missing, and it will just go for it. have to list them. Yeah, so you, yeah. you'd have to list each feature. Right now, you'd have to list each one individually, install install each one. Yeah. Um, somebody talked to me yesterday about that. We're looking at adding an exclude option to that, so you can uh, list what you want excluded from that list. Okay. All right. So, that was the execution module, there is also a state module, which was do, uh, which is kind of like, hey, I want to be sure my file server, mail server, <coughs> web server, whatever, is installed on this system the way and with all the features that I wanted, with all the sub roles. So that's for the file server manager installed. The other way is like, okay, remove, make sure everything is out of that box and it's not on there. The way you do that, simple example, install underscore is winserverManager.installed. Recurse is through the name is web underscore server. You will find those names when you do a list available. It will tell you like, you know, IS web server and then the short name after that. That's the short name you want to use when you pick what role you want to install. I'm going to switch it over to Shane, and who's, he's going to give a short demonstration about some of the features. All right, so um, I have an Ubuntu master uh, with a Mac and a Windows 10, Mac OS X and a Windows 10 minions running. So we're just going to do some, just some demo that they both, they work, and make sure they're still up. They've been sitting here for, maybe they went to sleep while we're waiting. <laughs> and maybe it did. Yes, yeah, so let me let me get the Windows one up here. Let's see if it's up. It should be up. It's there, let's do that again. Okay. Just had to wake up. I don't know. Okay. Uh, so now we're going to look at versions, what version of salt we're running. We're running the release candidate for 
salt, and then we've got a versions report. And anytime you guys submit an issue on GitHub, it's useful for us to have this full versions report. It lets us know what OS and exactly what versions of things are installed. And so we got both of them there. Now we're gonna look at some grains. We added some uh, special MAC grains, like a uh, system serial number, some things that other guys requested. Yeah? I can't help but notice that the MAC is returning like two or three times faster than Windows Is there a reason why it's just running faster? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, I was not going to say that. So we we had to turn on we turned on multi processing for Windows and that that slowed it down quite a bit. Um, I'm also on a, a Mac machine running Parallels and virtualizing Windows and so I don't know if it's if that has anything to do with it. But um, anyways. So we're going to look at some specific ones here, like OS, just to show that they get two different ones here. Uh, the kernel gives us kind of some versioning. Oh, this one just tells us the Darwin. So Matt comes back as Darwin. And then we have um, this one gives us version. And in, in Windows, it's actually OS version, so may, maybe there needs to be some standardization here with the grains. There isn't an OS version for Mac, so maybe I ought to do some standardization here. But um, All right, so those are kind of grains. Here's another one uh, might be useful. It's a network IP address. Did I typed that right? No, I didn't. Adder. I do it wrong. <clears throat> did I do it wrong? What do I got? See, network. All right. All, right. <laughs> All right, so we can get very similar information from these. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same command on these. I just can't remember the syntax, even though it's written right here in front of me. <laughs> okay, um, another one we're going to work at. So this is to demonstrate uh, package.install. So I, to make this work, I had to find some packages that, that were available on both Windows and Mac. Um, so on this one, we're going to use uh, QEMU. I don't know if anybody uses that. But now this is going to go through and install QEMU. Now, of course, I mean, here's the trick for those of you who, are, who are, might be running Linux, Windows, and Mac. Man, <laughs> well, <laughs> Mac has to install a bunch of prerequisite software it's, as well. If you, would have a, if you would have a Linux package um, and you would have an equivalent of that particular software for Windows, you could, as long as you keep the ID of the package the same in the Win repo. So, okay, let's let's start real simple. You have, you know, you have a Linux package, Win underscore enhanced. Yes, you have a Windows for Vim software installer. If you would call in your Win repo state file that Vim Windows uh, uh, Vim installer does Vim underscore enhanced, and you would do a package dot install Vim underscore enhanced. It will install the right versions on Windows and, and Linux because it looks for that ID in that Vim repo state file, in that Vim, Vim repo software uh, installer file. So that's kind of a little trick if you want to do that. All right, um, I had some time zone examples, but uh, we're, well, I'll show them to you. Because um, so, this is kind of funny. I don't, I don't, not sure why this happens, but uh, even though we're both on the same time, dang it. I already hit enter. Even though we're on the
the same time zone. One's a six and one's a seven. I, I, don't, I don't know which one's right. Um, and then it, even funnier is this one. Oh, dang it. Sorry, everybody. Yeah, so I know why this one happens. So Imanuk is this is a beautiful place up in Canada. They have the uh, most photographed building in the town is the uh, the Igloo Church, the Our Lady of Victory Church. They call it the Igloo Church. They have the great North American Northern Arts Festival, annual Sunrise Festival, and the Muskrat Jamboree. So that's why this took precedence over Denver. No, I'm just kidding. So what it is is um, in Windows, it doesn't return America, Denver. It returns Mountain Standard Time. And then in, in, in uh, Python, we have a lookup dictionary. And the first match it finds is America Inuvik. So that's why that shows up like that. But it's still the right time zone. And anyway, so there, there's little inconsistencies. But for the most part, it's all. Much of it is supported. And, and the goal is to get feature parity with Linux so that everything works. Yeah? Sure. Uh, Next one. I have two questions. One, have, have you gotten anything as far as like state files or any kind of things that you're going to be editing as far as like IIS, web management, setting up logging your sites? Right now, we do a lot of that, and then I have some more writing on our PowerShell scripts. Oh, I know what you mean. So, so the question is so are you actually talking about a formula or actually an IIS module? Uh, um, so the, the question is again, do we have already state modules or execution modules, to, particularly to IS? As far as I know, but I, have to, I would have to check that somebody recently did an IS state. I don't know. I, I haven't seen one. Yeah, I think, I there think is. Rob did. So it's not in salt. I haven't seen it. Is it called is it called IIS or is yeah, it's called, it's called, I have, I've, okay. I've seen it too, I think. I wish people would let me know when they submit those types of things because uh, no. The other thing I just in the same thing, since they just recently announced a whole Windows and bash. Yeah. Is there any talk about like how that's gonna affect all? They announced it, yeah. I don't know what, what that is going to do, to be honest. I mean, the, the same thing like they announced, they're going to hopefully finally incorporate SSH. So. Sir, huh? I've already downloaded and it's not in the Yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you can download it, but, it, but it's not natively building yet. Yeah, it is. Well, you launch PowerShell, you type bash, and you get that. Yeah. But, but I, I don't think it's going to hinder salt. I think it will give us another, another avenue of uh, solving problems now. I mean, we've had command line, PowerShell, and Windows API, and now we have Bash too. So I, I prefer the API stuff myself because it handles the Unicode stuff correctly, things like that, and without having to parse a bunch of uh, text lines from a DOS return or a or a PowerShell return, trying to parse that object that comes back. It's easier to just get the variable straight into Python from an API than it is to try to deal with the command line stuff. So, but if yeah, you look yeah. at the if you look at the docs, docs.saltsack.com, and I look at the modules, you will see the number of Windows modules is growing exp expandingly. package.install? Um, so package.install uses brew, so you're limited to whatever. Sorry, not the package install, but you said that you're also going to be launching an installer. The installation of salt? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so it's a PKG file. You run it, you do have to put in your root password to install it. Everything gets installed in opsalt. It creates the plist file for you for the services for salt. 
Um, the config file's in the same place. Um, you, have, you have to manually edit the config. But uh, I'm, the next step, I've been talking to some people to help me, because I'm not a Mac guy, I'm a Windows guy. And so apparently we're gonna write a script to help automate make some of the, the configuration issues after you've installed it. Um, but you're, you mean installing other packages? Or, or you're talking about salt? Yeah, so like if I enjoy a new, like, you know, Mac laptop user, sure. mm -hmm. uh, I have an empty check boot that runs all these scripts to install a salt in the background. So all the key lists and like launch new folders that salt runs the fruit on the machine. Right. And the user can't like pull it as a change. Yeah, this, this does all that for you. The package installer does that. And that was an easier answer than the one I gave you. <laughs> First time, okay. All right. All right, we're gonna demo some uh, states now. I have a... By the way, we, all, we will have a little bit of time left at the end for any other questions, okay? So I have some uh, states that I've created, and I use these in, in all my testing when I do a Windows build or I do a Mac build. I run through this suite of tests just to make sure certain things are working because nothing's more frustrating than getting a tag and then, and then running through your tests, having it fail and then having to re-tag. So this, one's, this one just copies something down from the internet and puts it on a local machine. Oh, that's because I'm not hooked up to the internet. All right, that one's not gonna work because I'm not hooked up to Wi-Fi and I don't want to right now. So that's gonna, that one's gonna fail. So we check that. Let, let's, here's another one. So this one is called, um, just creates a file, creates a file. So which one died? Windows? I don't know. I'm not a, let's see. Oh, is it? Yeah, I have to kill the job. Okay. <clears throat> so how do you kill a job? Anybody go to that one? Go to that class? Okay, there we go. That's all. All right. So this one, this one was kind of tricky to write because. Um, on Windows, you have C, the way the way Windows does its file system with file letter or uh, with drive letters, and the Mac one handles uh, backslashes. So I had to put some some ginger in it. Does anybody want to see that? Uh, demo, and this one was called create file. Probably be prettier if I vimmed it, huh? And so I just check for what version of the OS is running. If it's Windows, we put it there. Otherwise, I know it's a Mac machine. If I knew I was running multiple machines, I'd have to put another check for Darwin. Check for Darwin and see if, and if not, I'd put that in temp. Actually, that would work for Linux too, right? You put it in TMP, so. Yeah. Anyway, then it just puts that variable here, the temp variable, and creates stuff.txt, and it contains all that stuff. And the reason I create that file is because then my next one that I run is a comment. Come on. I hit like the demo. Oh, oh, oh it's not autocomplete. OK. And it comments out a line in that text file. So if it was an, a config file you had, it searches for uh, level equals warning or critical, I think, and then comments that line out. And then I did an uncomment because that one was a little trickier to do. And, and as people break stuff in commits, I create tests to check for the breaks later, you know, so it doesn't ever get broken again. So, all right, um, another one. This one took a little work to get working. We had to create a shadow module to work. This is a a user add, so this adds a user on both uh, Windows and Mac, and it creates the home directory. Well, it points to the home directory. Um, see that both that worked on both of them, and then I have a a user delete as well. So you can add users, delete users from both of these. Anybody want to see? Yeah. These are only like local users. Though. Local users. Not, Not yet. yet. We need to create an AD module. Um, somebody did put some Active Directory stuff in the user module, and we took it out, because this needs to be local to the machine only. 
Um, but we'll, that is on the radar. You could submit an issue on GitHub and we'll, uh, or pay money, and then they would really bump that up on priority. <laughs> Seems like those who pay money, those are the ones I get task, put to task on first, so. <clears throat> um, anything else? I got a, I created a state to install. It installs Q, EMU, and Pigeon. It's going. It's it will going. take a little while. Yeah. You have any test loss about on Git for other people? I don't, but I could, uh, I could certainly put them up. If you uh, salt the salt users group on Google or Gmail, what do they call it? Is that what it's called, salt users? Yeah, salt users. It's a mail group, mail, mailing right? list, salt, salt users mailing list. I monitor that often. You send me a message on that and I'll, that will remind me. So I'm sure I will forget to put it up. If you want to send, send me something. You mean, you mean those, uh, <clears throat> All right, it did. We, we can run it again and it will, it will say it's installed. So it, it did install it. Just sometimes the Windows times out. If you're having timeout issues like that, you can add a, the default is five seconds. You can add a dash T, make it 20 seconds to your command, and that'll fix a lot of those timeout issues. It's just, it didn't return enough time, so Salt assumed it wasn't. Yeah, wasn't to be honest, I mean, I've, I've done a lot of, uh, I think there's a lot of customers with, with Windows environments, and uh, if I get there, because the default timeout is five seconds, uh, you can set that in the master configuration file. So if, I, if I'm in an environment where they are mainly Windows, I set it to 30 by default. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's the nature of the beast. Sorry to say so, but it takes a little longer to install stuff and to react back. I've also seen actually that, that 2008, it's kind of funny to say, but 2008 to react a little faster than 2012. And the, the last one I have here is the uninstall. And, and I set this one up to remove all the dependencies as well. Great. On the white died on that. First one, what did it say? Is the Windows one, huh? Hold on, what is that? Huh. But it did run, because it says it's removed here. All right, well, it did run. Anybody want to look at that one? So demo. <clears throat> so I just put a little ging in there, and if it finds Mac OS, then it also kills all those dependencies with it. So I think we're... That's the demo. Go back to the slides. Okay. Okay, so there we go. So we talked a little bit about history of support, manual install, software management, updates, Windows. At the moment, really, there are more Windows modules out there than for Mac, but I think that's going to grow fast. Um, Shane is one of the is, is specifically tasked for Windows and Mac uh, development. Uh, we have another person, you might know him, uh, as Dave Boucher, Utah Dave. He's also uh, does a lot for the Windows development for Salt. So the whole Windows and Mac is going to get more and more attention within the Salt community also. Because let's face it, I mean, we have to be able to support as much OSs as possible. Any questions? Yes. Um, I noticed you have like it's the 2016 version. So how like are this Windows supported? Is like the install supported? Like 20 like the 2016 version? 
Yeah, so the question is, you know, uh, Shane was demoing the 2016.3 version. Uh, what is supported in the current version, 2015.8.8? Everything I showed you on Windows is there in 2015.8.8. Yeah, so all the Win updates, the Win rolls, package install, Win repo has been out there for a long time. So that's there, that's already available for you. It's, it's the Mac part which gets added in 2016.3. Any other questions? Nope. Oh, the other closer. Sorry. <laughs> Can you tell the closest feature between Green and Yeah, so. Sorry? No, and actually, we've been talking about that. Uh, I think I brought it up because I had the similar. So the question is like, you know, if you go to the docs and you see all the modules there, yes would be nice to know, it's like, okay, this module will work on, on Mac, Windows, and, 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 and Linux, yes? And we talked about that, because you're not the first one asking this. I mean, I'm, I'm on the road a lot, that's my life. Yes? I go to customers and give trainings and do consulting, so I had the question before. And I, I, I gave it back, we just have to look at a way, because I don't know if most of you know, most of our documentation happens in the code. So that whole list, what you see of modules on our website, comes purely out of the code compiler. So we have to find a way of tagging those modules, like, hey, like package.install, for instance, will work on Mac, Linux, and Windows, yes? But hmm. Win Server Manager, you can already figure it out, but, but, but there might be others out there, will only work on Windows, yes? So people at the end will have to uh, kind of Re-emphasize that again because I think it's a good idea. Yeah, but each each server each OS does have its unique things that you have to write for. But there are yeah. common things that should have feature parity. So, so I, let, let me uh, <coughs> explain that a little bit for those who don't know. So, if you do package dot install, so the whole package module or the package state, actually in the background. The minute you execute that on a Windows, it calls the Win package installer. Yes, and so it actually, so we have the generic package.install, but underneath there, there is a number of sub packages. You just don't notice it because you do only have to use the package.install. You don't have to go to another module. Yeah. Right? yeah, it uses a virtual name and it yeah. detects the OS and it says if this is Windows, then use this package. This is Linux, use this one, but they're all called package. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so you talked about uh, a lot about administration. Uh, I think there's already a lot of tools that are more mature for that. But what about deployments? So deployments for like I want to deploy a whole Windows so server. I deploy a web farm upgrade, mm -hmm. changes, modifications. Okay, how, how would we utilize it for that? Is it like so. That is besides what we just showed, like, you know, state, states and whatever. There's something else called orchestration. Uh, it's called the orchestration state. What that allows you, that's where everything comes together. If I use an orchestration state, I can use execution modules. I can use cloud modules. So I can start off by spin up a system up in the cloud, a Windows server. Then I can do, for instance, a what for event. I wait for an event to come back to my master, like, hey, it's up and running now, yes? My minion is installed, continue on. So then you can do either install software with your state, or you can do system reboots with execution modules. So, I mean, it's endless what you can do with that. Yeah, Does that, yeah? Okay. yeah look at that, at orchestration. You basically want to set up your whole system with your state files so that you can just spin it up and apply the states and have everything you need set up rather than in setting everything up and then trying to match that with your state files. It's a lot easier to do it building it with the state files first. If that makes sense. And then you know that it works. The next time you have to reset it, you just apply that state and you know it's going to be just the way it was before because that's how you set it up. Go ahead. So um, with Windows, if I want to add more Python modules, um, I know that I, right, so far I've been creating uh, Python builds that install the Python modules directly into the salt um, uh, library directory for Python. Mm -hmm. Now I'm hoping it's going to be a lot easier for Mac. Do I just do pip install? What's, uh, uh, where is um, uh, Python default from? Is it, it's not 
shopping bundled with it? Like yes, in uh, Mac, it is bundled and Windows. We bundle our own version of um, Python, install all the de uh, dependencies, the pip dependencies and everything are included in that. So if you need to add another one, there is a pip install command, but you have to give it the fully qualified, the CW, the, the full path to the pip binary. And there's some examples if you go online and look at the, the documentation for pip.install. Um, but you give it that and, and you can pip install whatever modules you need. So, in, the, in the, uh, so, that, so we will look towards the general install? So no, that's why, you have, that's why you have to give the full path to, to your salt pip binary because that's the one it's going to install under. Uh huh. If, if you just do pip, it's probably going to grab the system one because that's the first one it's going to find. Because I, I don't think we put it in the path in Windows. And in Mac, we put ours at the end of the path right now. So it'll find the local version of Python first, I believe. Okay. <clears throat> I heard the applause and I checked my own time. We're already one minute out. Okay, we do one more question if anybody has a question. If not, then uh, I want to thank you all. Provide feedback for this uh, talk, uh, like I guess. Uh, my name is Rob Hilberding. It's very simple. Rob at saltstack.com. <laughs> Shane is Ashley at saltstack.com. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>